Uh, I'm Igdeep Singh Lumana. I'm finally year undergraduate at IIT Roorkee. So the project that I'll be presenting here is our recent work on the design of an optical sensor for calculating chlorophyll concentration in leaves. The project is in collaboration with Mangesh Gaurav and Professor Mariam Shodai from Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. So first, uh, let us talk about the outline of this presentation. I'll <coughs> look into the motivation behind this project, as in why chlorophyll determination can be an interesting problem, followed by a brief, brief description of why of what optical sensors have been designed for the same, and what will follows that, that will be our proposed methodology and an experimental evaluation of the same. So, uh, why is chlorophyll concentration determination an interesting problem? Well, as it turns out, at least 10 of the 14 necessary nutrients for healthy plant growth can be determined and directly correlated if one knows the chlorophyll concentration. However, Still, most of the countries are using, uh, since most of the countries are still using ill-determined and heuristic fertilizer application methodologies, that has resulted in significant acidification of soil. As per a Wall Street Journal report, the ideal ratio of nitrogenous to phosphorus in soil is supposed to be 4 is to 1, but India has a ratio of 24 is to 1, while China has a ratio of 300 is to 1. So, this obviously means that there, the currently existing solutions are lacking. We find that there are three major types of solutions, laboratory methods, electroconductivity-based sensors, and optical sensors. While laboratory methods are significantly cheap and highly accurate, they involve a tedious methodology, which is pretty complex and hard to follow. This results in large overheads for only a limited number of samples can be uh, modeled at a given period of time. Electroconductivity sensors similarly are cost effective and easy to use, uh, sorry, uh, portable and fairly accurate, but the methodology again is pretty complex and hence has rendered them unpopular too. Same goes for optical sensors for they are quite expensive ranging from around two to $3,000. Hence a method that is inexpensive, portable, easy to use and fairly accurate is needed. So we also can see that the market impact is significant for uh, as per a report by department of fertilizer government of india around 8 billion dollars can be saved for fertilizer subsidies if effective utilization is done so we look into the since uh, optical sensors have significant accuracy at not uh, uh, but inefficiency in terms of cost we look into their uh, methodology and the basic principles behind them so we find that uh, these, are, uh, these sensors are using the principles similar to the ones found in geoimaging satellites, which uh, capture spectral information in different uh, wavelength channels. So uh, if you look over here, you can see that uh, you can see Landsat images of Washington DC in seven different channels. This can be used for figuring out the concentration or location of a particular kind of uh, material for a particular material would resonantly absorb or reflect some, sig some specific wavelengths. A relevant example shown here is that of NDVI, uh, that of NDVI, which is a spectral parameter used for determining the health of vegetation. Healthy vegetation, as you can see in this graph, has high amounts of uh, reflectance in near infrared range of wavelength, while it absorbs most of the uh, energy in the red spectrum. Similarly, uh, in contrast, actually, dry vegetation absorbs and uh, re uh, reflects almost similar amounts of energy in the near infrared and red range. This can be very easily thus modeled for determining the health of uh, health of vegetation. So, uh, optical sensors essentially use the same principle. However, their cost and efficiency has rendered them seeing limited use. We move towards our proposed methodology, which is named SNAP. SNAP uses uh, cameras for capturing the uh, information, spectral information. These uh, involve an image sensor for, for the cameras, will involve an image sensors for high fidelity captures of the scene. And this allows for good pixel manipulation because the host processor can be very easily programmed. However, a major limitation is the fact that the image signal processor performs nonlinear preprocessing. So, uh, in order to circumvent that, we use raw images of leaves which are directly outputted at the, uh, uh, across the image sensor and have still haven't yet been processed by the image signal pr processor. 
A main problem that occurs with raw images, however, is the variable sensitivity of photodiodes to light. One needs to uh, model this sensitivity. This, is, this can be modeled using a parameter named quantum efficiency, which that can be described as the ratio of absorbed to uh, incident energy in a range D lambda centered at a wavelength lambda. Uh, if one knows the incident illumination energy spectrum, one can also, uh, and given the pixel value, one can now determine the amount of energy that was incident at that pixel by just dividing that pixel value with the uh, quantum efficiency. So uh, this brings us to an important aspect of SNAP, the illumination sources. We use specific illumination sources which are necessitated by the spectral parameter. Uh, most of the previous work were using uh, sunlight directly, and that is a huge uh, problem for sunlight can vary in terms of its intensity composition from day to day and time to time. So uh, illumination sources of specific wavelengths are used. We also banish effects of external light by designing this apparatus. Uh, this apparatus's ex uh, dimensions were based um, upon the diffusion spectrum of the illumination sources. You can go through the paper for further details. This brings us to uh, finally the same point uh, as mentioned in a previous slide, that we need to know the average amount of energy absorbed. Hence, we came up with this effective quantum efficiency parameter that models the net amount of energy absorbed by the image sensor in a given wavelength range and divided by the net amount of energy incident upon it. So you just divide the effective quantum efficiency, uh, uh, the pixel value with the effective quantum efficiency, and you can figure out the net amount of energy incident at the photodiode corresponding to that pixel level. Since we are, uh, so we are now done with the major issues with using cameras, we can now use, choose a particular spectral parameter as needed. While most of the uh, applications before used uh, NDVI, we are preferring to use some other parameter for, we believe that ground-based GIS can uh, allow for more flexibility. So based upon literature, we, came, we found this parameter, GNDY more relevant for it allows low model variance with respect to leaves of same chlorophyll concentration, but different species. Here is the parameter shown. This was a moderately healthy leaf that we picked up, and uh, we have already accounted for the effective quantum efficiency. And this was a totally dead leaf that was literally picked up from the ground. It was dry. As you can see, none of the pixels lit up for uh, the dead leaf, however, most of the patches where chlorophyll concentration was significant and yellow patches, which were minimal, they turned out to be black, but the rest of the patches did turn out to be white. We moved on. We can now move on towards an experimental evaluation of this. The evaluation setup would involve, involve, a, an, uh, involve a, a Nikon B70 camera and an apparatus as, defined, as designed per the aforementioned criteria. So. We uh, modeled a, a linear regression uh, model for the uh, rice samples, 50 rice samples, and correlated them with SPAD's NDVI values. We found that the alternative, which is at least 40 times more costlier than our device, has a correlation of 9 point, 0.908. And similarly, with chlorophyll concentration, our device has a correlation of 0 0.88. So even though we are 40 times cheaper, we still have essentially the same accuracy. The same has been shown here. Most of the uh, samples, and the parameter calculated using our device and SPAD are essentially the same. This is the y is equal to x axis. We can also account for spatial variation for, for the uh, model device is pretty handy. You can take it from one patch to other patch directly. And we have also released an app which can be used for designing a heat map uh, to determine fertilizer requirements from soil bed to soil bed. Finally, our model, uh, our prototype was brought down to a microcontroller, which has the same correlation as that of the Nikon B70 camera, and it uses a Raspberry Pi and an OIR Sony MX 219 image sensor. So yeah. Con in conclusion, we de demonstrated SNAP, a novel optical sensor that can calculate chlorophyll concentration in leaves. SNAP is cost effective and has essentially the same accuracy while being portable and easy to use. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.